Hello everyone and welcome back to Movement. This week we are going to continue our journey through stage combat and what we are going to do this class is focus on chokes, grabs, slams, and neck breaks. The first thing that we're going to do is start with a grab. I want you to put your hand up and I want you to do this motion. It's the Karate Kid wax on motion. Wax on, wax off. But what you're going to do is do a circle and as you are completing the circle, you are going to close your hand. This is a grab. Anytime you are grabbing somebody, you want to do this motion. And what you're doing, you're not going to actually grab them. If I'm grabbing someone's shirt, and this is a play, my costume designer is going to kill me. If I'm grabbing somebody and it's their hair, well then the cinematographer in the film is going to kill me. The makeup and hairstylist are going to kill me. And the actor or actress is probably going to want to kill me as well. But what you're doing is signaling to your audience that you are grabbing something. And you tense up your muscles and you can make it look like you're actually grabbing something. And then all I have to do is get just a little bit of fabric just a little bit and then the audience will go, oh, I get it. That is a grab. But if you are being grabbed, what you're going to do is if somebody grabs me and their arm is there and they are grabbing me, what I am going to do is grab their hand and pull it into my body as hard as possible. So they're not grabbing my costume because I, the victim, the prey, am grabbing them and I am latching on. So I am pulling myself into them, and then that way if they are pulling me around, I'm attached to them. So they can move me wherever they want, and I'm the glue, right? I'm pulling them into my body as much as possible. So when, anytime somebody's going to be grabbed and you're going to be moved somewhere, you're going to grab, and the partner is going to, ah, no! and you are going to grab on and pull their hands into you as tight as possible so that you can be moved in any direction. That's a grab. Now this can happen if you're grabbing someone's hair. It can happen if you're grabbing someone's ear. Even if someone's grabbing my ear, you're not gonna do this for my ear. You may just go like this to grab my ear, but I am going to lean into the pain, lean into the pain. I'm gonna lean into whatever the pain is and then I'm going to either follow you or I can grab your hand. Ah, 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 ah. And the audience will still get it. They'll still follow the illusion because that's what we're doing. We're creating an illusion. So that's a grab. The next thing that we are going to go over is a choke. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going around. Come on, use your words, buddy. I have more than enough words to describe you, Stark. Now a choke is going to be used all the time. When you are choking somebody, your job as the choker is to make sure that they are safe. So your job is to make a cage. I want you to flex and make an unbreakable cage with your hand and you want it to have, if possible, a V. And that V, the reason why you have that is because it's gonna be placed right on the chin and jawline of your partner and you're going to reach out and grab them and you want your audience to see the tension in your arm as you are choking. And you can make it look like you are choking them a lot. And I'm not choking anybody, I'm choking an invisible person right now. But your job is to make sure that your partner has a safe space to breathe. They need to have space to breathe because they're gonna be selling the danger of this. So when you choke, your partner then is going to grab this arm with both of their hands, pull that arm, what, so they're gonna have that arm, and then they are going to take their chin, since it's here, and they are going to push their chin into their chest. So they, you place your hand here, and then they smush their chin into their chest and pin your hand. They pin your hand there, and then they grab your arm and latch on. That way you can move them around, and they can safely breathe. They're not being choked, and your cage is there to protect their esophagus. 
This is the same kind of thing that pro wrestlers do. You'll see it in movies used all of the time. But what you're doing is you are creating an unbreakable cage. And if it's a two-handed, you're going to create an unbreakable cage here. And what you're doing is placing it there so that your, your partner can be safe. And from here, you can lift them up, you can do whatever you want because what you're doing is providing a strong support. They are doing a pull up when you are choking them and lifting them in the air. They're jumping up and doing a pull up and your job is to spot their weight. And then you will let them down. A neck break is one of the most fun. A neck break for you, all you are going to do is look from one side of the room and quickly look at the other. But once you do that, you're gonna look from here and then quickly look over there and then come back to the center. So slowly look, quickly look, come back to the center kind of wobbly. And that then, from once you are wobbly, the audience needs to see that there was resistance. I don't want my neck to be broken. So then when it snaps, I'm looking and then I come to the center and the audience needs to see the dead eyes. They need to see your body lose all of the tension in it. And then you will go into a faint. So you are going to, no, 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 no. <sighs> and then go down. That's what your, if your neck is being broken, if you are the neck breaker, what you are gonna do is place your hand below and above your partner's head. That's it, just in this straight line. And then all you are going to do is follow your partner and as they quickly look to the side, you will move your hands out of the way. So as they are looking quickly this way, your hands are moving these, this way, and all of that's happening so that when the nap happens, when the neck breaking sound happens, the audience, there's so much going on that you're able to hide the illusion and it looks very realistic. So here, One of the best naps for this is a styrofoam cup. You need a third party to do the nap for this exercise. But when they're watching, you wanna break the styrofoam cup or you can take a, a can or a bottle of water or, and you can just twist. And what you want is that crunch sound. And the crunch sound happening with this movement and the audience sees your lifelessness in your body. And then they see this movement and the, the, the tension in the person's face, but remember, they're just doing this. That's all they're doing. But that combination is very terrifying for your audience. It really does look like somebody got their neck broke. The final thing that we are going to do is a slam. Now a slam is really fun to do and very devastating and you will fool everyone that you are interacting with. But what you're going to do if you're the partner is you are going, if it's really all about the person who's getting slammed. If you're getting slammed, somebody's going to go behind you and they're going to do the fake grab. You then are going to be surprised and grab their arm and look and look up at them. You want this arm open so your audience can see because if I use the other arm, depending on where your audience is, it's gonna get in the way. So if your partner is standing on this side of me, I want to open up to my partner so my arm will be the opposite of my partner. And this hand is going to be on the table. It's really important that this hand does not leave the table or whatever you're getting slammed on because this is telling your body subconsciously, hey, there is a table here, do not, you. if you pass through this, you're gonna knock yourself out. And from here, you are going to come down and bring yourself down, but this hand here goes from their arm and hits and naps on the table. It naps on the table and then both die and your head is going to go and bounce up 
and you will be lifeless. And then gently rest your head on the table again. So it will go something like, BAM! We need to see, BAM! We need to see the lifelessness. We need to see the fight and then the lifelessness that happens right after that. If you are doing the slam, you are going to pretend to grab and then your job is to let them latch on and then the partner decides when they are going to fall. Once they fall, then you go, ah, that's it. You do not push them. You never push them. All you do is follow their head and extend your arm. Just like if I was punching, I need to end the punch, but I, it's all about the line that I'm creating. The audience is just going to see, ah, and they're going to go, oh, they slammed them. But in reality, the person slammed themselves. And you can slam yourself into a floor. You can slam yourself into a wall. You can slam yourself into whatever you want. But I want you to be very, very clear that you do not leave this hand. If I'm being slammed, I need to make sure this hand is there. And I, my, this hand beats my head here. And once it, once it naps, that nap sound will bounce my head back up. And then I will be lifeless and melt down onto the desk onto the table, onto the floor. All right, everybody. What I want you to do now is upload a recording of each of these things. I want you to have a bunch of fun with this. Take your time, make sure you're taking your time with each of these exercises. Because if you try, don't be seduced in the power and the violence and remember that speed is going to get you hurt. Go slow and the more you get comfortable, the faster you can go. But in stage combat, you should never go faster than 75%, ever. Because it's not about going full speed. Full speed is gonna be way too fast and way too dangerous. You need to be in control and you need to tell the story. Tell a story and make sure everything you do tells a story. All right, everybody. I can't wait to see your videos and I'll see you soon.